Bamboo printers have a reputation for really good print quality. And I've had this one in my shop for over a year now and I've printed several thousand prints on it and I haven't really noticed a deterioration in that print quality. So is there any reason then that we should upgrade to something like these, which are made by Bichu, or is it just as good to stick with a completely stock setup on these printers? I think we need to do some torture testing to find out. So stick around. Before we do anything, what I like to do is get this printer back as close to stock as possible because I have been running with the E3D hot end upgrade on this printer. And I think we just need to change it back to the stock hot end. So this is a brand new 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I'll get this one installed. The only upgrade I'll be leaving on this printer is this Bichu Panda Jet, and that's because I've already completed a full testing video on it. And if you haven't seen that video, it will be linked up above there. These upgrades affect extrusions and retractions quite a bit, and we also want something that can test overall print quality as well. I am gonna be using Bamboo Lab Matte PLA. This is kind of like a sawdust type color, a wood color. And I really like this filament. I like the look and I like the matte finish as well. So what I've done is taken this torture test and combined it with a standard Bamboo Lab calibration cube and we end up with something like this. So let's go ahead and run that test right now. What I'd like to do next is use the same filament but print something that's quite a bit larger that gives us a more uninterrupted view of what the extrusion looks like. So the wood version is definitely still a little bit better. It's just a bit smoother on the inside. Anyways, as far as the quality goes, we'll take a little bit closer look at that in a little bit. We have torture test number one. We have actual functional print number two, and I went ahead and I printed a Benchy as well. We are ready to do the swap, but I'd like to compare side by side first to see what the actual differences are between this stock and the upgrade kit. This is the first time I've taken the extruder gear assembly off and I've never done any maintenance to it. I haven't even cleaned it, so shame on me. So I kind of expected it to be pretty dirty and worn, but I'm not seeing that at all. There's a little bit of residue on the large yellow helical gear and it looks like the hardened steel hobbed extruder gears are showing a tiny bit of wear as well and a little bit of debris between the teeth, but it's so minor, it's almost not even worth mentioning. There are a few scratches and dings on the stock cover, but overall it's in really good shape. I just noticed that I lost a magnet at some point near the bottom there. And one of the magnets in the stock cover near the top sticks out much further, which is probably why I've never been able to get my cover to seat properly. I'm not sure how you feel about it, but the cover is a bit like the face of the printer and changing it will completely change how it looks. So I'm a little bit conflicted on doing this. The original upgrade duct from Bichu is called the Panda Jet and this one is called the Panda Jet Pack and it is made with multi-jet fusion in nylon. It's supposed to be lighter and much better for heat dissipation because it is so open. It has a removable logo up at the top that can be replaced to suit your style and of course comes assembled with the Panda Jet on it. But this kit has some bling with the chrome logo on it. There is a triangulated main structure with a nice hexagonal subframe. Overall, it looks like a pretty nice piece. It's been carefully designed. As far as the weight, the stock version with the Panda Jet came in at 27.46 grams, but with that Mystic Magnet, it's closer to 28 grams and the upgrade is 21.96. So it's about six grams lighter than the stock. For the stock extruder gear assembly, I always thought that there was some magic happening inside here to produce such good quality. So let's open it up and see what is going on. The cover is a bit snug and it's not easy to take off. And it seems like these parts are made from glass fiber nylon and they're pretty stiff. Well, as far as the magic, it's not as much magic as it is just good solid design and engineering work. The large nylon gear has a steel shaft that's supported by 
fairly large bearings on both ends and the idler arm pivots on a shaft and it has a pretty large and stout spring to keep the pressure on and the screw is set to nearly fully compress that spring as well. And I have no idea if this is of any benefit, but the hobbed teeth on the idler are finer than the ones on the main extruder gear. The housing overall is in really good shape. It's just a tiny bit dirty with a bit of filament dust. The upgrade for this is called the Panda Extruder and it is anodized 6061 T6 aluminum. And it's also skeletonized to reduce the weight. It'll also allow better air movement for cooling and make it easier to see the extrusion path as well. It looks really well made. There are no sharp edges. The anodizing is uniform and there are no bald spots. The extruder housing comes with two new bearings and some Allen keys as well. The stock setup has that large nylon gear attached to the hardened steel gears. The large gear has the helical cut and the next gear down which drives the opposing extruder gear is a hardened steel straight cut gear. And for the driven gear on the arm it's only the hardened steel straight cut gear and that finer hobbed extruder gear combined into one and pinned into position on that arm. The upgrade for this set is called the Panda Claw and it replaces all of the plastic parts to end up with a much more rigid setup which is supposed to last longer as well. The large helical gear is machined from brass which is going to be quite a bit heavier than the stock plastic gear but it will be stiffer as well. The other gears look like they're also brass but that's just the coating. They're hardened steel gears as well with an RNC nano coating for better wear resistance. I looked up RNC nano coating to find out what it is. One thing I'm sure about is if there are more letters in front of it, it is definitely better. The steel shaft has straight cut knurling and it is press fit into that brass spur gear. The upgrade is quite a bit different already, but they've gone one step further and replaced the straight cut gears with a set of helical gears, which is also wider than the original setup as well. It's hard to say how much of an impact it will have, but helical gears are normally viewed as an upgrade, providing a bit smoother operation with constant contact, and they're also a bit quieter as well. They also have a bit more friction as well, and they tend to apply force sideways. The idler arm on the driven gear is made from the same 6061 T6 CNC machine aluminum, but it does not seem to be anodized on this part. And there's quite a bit of difference in how easily the original spins versus the upgraded version as you can see here. For the entire stock extruder gear assembly, it comes in at 42.98 grams and I'll assemble the upgraded version using some of the parts from the stock setup. I'm also gonna add a bit of grease to the idler shaft. This is not not a requirement, I just think it's a good idea to reduce wear over time between the steel pin and the aluminum arm. The bearing that fits into the larger half of the frame could be a little bit more snug, so I will use a little dab of Loctite just to make sure that it does not move around over time. Now before it's together, these helical gears require a bit of grease and I'll apply a thin coat with a brush. And now I can add the spring and spring cap back in. Because of the larger brass gear, this comes in at 51.76 grams, which is nearly nine grams heavier than the stock gear assembly. Overall, with this entire kit, the weight has increased by nearly three grams. So it is a bit of a wash, though I suppose you could argue that the mass is more central than it was before. Overall, this is a pretty nice assembly, so let's get it reinstalled. And before we run those same prints, I will also recalibrate for vibration compensation because of those changes to the position of the weight in the head.
All the prints have finished and when we compare the calibration spike, it is really hard to find any differences at all. They look about as close to identical as you could expect to get. For the Benchy, I found a slight improvement on bridges where they transition back to a wall. And for the token trays, the print quality on the stock setup was very good already. And for the seam, it's nearly perfect there too. And for the Bichu upgrade, the inside is good. However, there's one area that looks like it lacked support for the overhangs, which is strange because this is an identical print. On the outside, there is very little difference. The extrusion directly after the seam looks to be slightly cleaner though. So overall, the quality is very close to the same as the stock setup. From a heat dissipation side, the far more open cover and frame around the gears does a much better job of keeping the area inside the head cooler. It's tough to improve on an already great performing extruder. The quality of the Bichu upgrades is quite good. Personally, I like the skeletonized look and I like to see what's going on inside. So I really think it comes down to personal preference whether you like to do these upgrades or not. The only feedback I provided to Bichu on the extruder housing was that the bearings could be a little bit closer to a press fit. I would like to see some different color options as well so that we can choose the clean bamboo look if we wanted or go with a color that suits our taste a bit better. I'm a big fan of blue so it worked out perfect for me. Since the logo on the Panda Jetpack is replaceable, I've designed one that says Bamboo Lab to be printed with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle but I have no experience with printing with that nozzle size and no matter what I do, I cannot get this to print properly. So I've linked it down below if you'd like to give it a try. My question to you is how do you feel about completely changing the look of that front cover? We're inching closer to 100,000 subscribers so thank you for all of your support. I have lots more new videos coming up so subscribe so you don't miss them. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel and for helping to make these videos possible. I also have a short list of links below of products that I've tested and I use in my shop on a regular basis if you want to check those out. Take care and we will see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.